Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, y'all yeah, the same age. Y'all was both born in the <laughs> same year. We, we grew up together, yes. <laughs> so how about you? Uh, hey, hi, everybody. My name is JT, a.k.a. The, a, the Genius, and i uh, been married twice. <gasps> Wow. I That's my pearls. That. No one ever knew that. I can't believe you. Wow. I can't believe what you shared it. I didn't even have to share your business. And it was all inside. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this was inside all these years. My Say that again. Twice. twice. Wow. Twice. You've been married twice. Twice. <laughs> Did you not get married and like divorced while we didn't work? Boom! When did this happen? Imagine keeping that secret. Imagine. Imagine how I feel keeping your secrets. It wasn't a secret. Oh my goodness. You both tell me when I'm giving you dollars to put in somebody like you. And this is a true story. Too. It's not even a. It's not even fake. It's a true story. However, JT's been married twice, so let's let's pass it down to you on the end. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Donovan West. I am single but not married, so uh, it's a little different, right? I'm not married, but I'm not single though. But I'm uh, single. You get that? He's single and not available. We heard this one Did before. Y'all yeah, 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 didn't yeah, get that? Yeah. Okay. Meaning you have someone special? I got someone special. I never knew that. Well, I mean, that's okay. But now you do. I do. Thank you for sharing. That's okay. But right. understand, if you tell me anything, I keep your secrets. I kept a secret all these years. Well, that's different. We all know about, well, no comment. I'm not going to jump in with We already know. We already know. Catrice Bailey. I'm a model with Mima May Model Management. And I am a mother of three. And I am single. Wow, and no one would have known she's a mother of three. And I have to give it up to uh, Catrice. She has been in a car accident just yesterday. Her, her, her side is hurting, her foot is hurting, but she still made it out to single on a Saturday night. So I think that says something about her character, for right, one, right. that she is just this diehard supporter. And not even that, I think single on a Saturday night, to me, is like a bomb show. And if I cursed, I would say a bomb boom show. But that's what I would say, but I'm not saying that. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> DJ Smooth. <clears throat> Thanks, Shelly. Of course, I, you knew I was going to be here, regardless. Even I, if I was walking with a limp, I was going to be but here. But you are. You got like a bandage on your foot. You got a scar on you. I like all the documentation of all of her personal injuries. Keep it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate that for future representation. Yes. Here we are. We know. She was in an accident yesterday. And she's already aching, but she still brought herself here today. I like it. That's right. Work through the pain. It's the suffering. Can you, can you stop smiling? I need you to stop smiling. Okay, there you go. But see, she's a little loopy because it hurts. It hurts. Oh, I, yeah. It's the drugs. It's, yeah, yeah. Woo. Documentation. Yes. Remember me now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Dave. And good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dave, the soulmate specialist and owner of Diamonds and Rough Consulting. And I'm single because I'm not married, but I am in a relationship with my ordained spouse. I almost have a tear to my eye. <laughs> amen. Let the chair say amen. Yes. Congratulations to you finding your ordained spouse, which brings us to the topic of today is how men confess that they found the one. Now, I, I'm, just because JC shared his life with us, did you ever think you found the one? <laughs> you had two. Did you find the one? What was that like? <laughs> two. Were any of them the one or just the why not? <laughs> no, I settled. Mm, yeah. that's, a, ooh, that's good. That's ooh. a good thought. That's, you said it I out loud. Mean, I'm gonna keep it 100. I settled. You settled. They, you're right. And so, no, I never found the one. Did you know you were settling when you did it? No, because I was thinking I was doing, but you know, the going, right thing. The right thing. Doing the right thing. Exactly. Mm. Mm. And you get beating your head that this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. And so sometimes you hit your wagon into the wrong horse. The horse sometimes got three legs, sometimes two, you know what I mean? So I, I realized well, did your that wagon have square wheels? Yeah, that too. Okay, you know, just make it, sure. It rolled just like a wagon with square wheels. So trust mm. me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but she was proud to say she was your wife. I'm JT's wife. <laughs> she see you on the street. You know who I am? I'm JT's wife. You know what? Why <laughs> is it that people do that? Like, there's this chick, and I have known the dude since I was 15, and I introduced them. And then she came and introduced herself as Mrs. X. And I was like, but, like, 
like I've been knowing this dude for 20 years. Like I know his name, and you ain't got the my husband me to death. Like I know his name. It's so weird, but it's like. You know, he kept, she kept with the, you know, so then. My husband. Yeah, so my other girlfriend was like, for real, because he wasn't your husband last night. So then she stopped doing that. Oh, right. no, no. And that's facts, too, because that always went down that way, too. It was like, I, for sure, I'm your, I'm your wife, but behind closed doors, it's like, I don't like you. <laughs> but she was definitely proud of you. Mm, Lord, where I went, I'm, I'm doing an interview. Guess what? I'm JT's wife. <laughs> you know who I am? I'm JT's wife. <laughs> and then I, and I'll see you another time. Who are you? <laughs> JT's wife. So she was proud of you. Or she just, maybe she thought I wanted you. Maybe that. Maybe no. that's it. Oh. People are very proud to be a wife. They just want, they want the they, title. The title. They're so the upset. Title. They are so obsessed. I mean, come on now. The In our title. society, it's like a tag, especially for women, to say you single. It's like saying you single is like nobody ever wanted you. You ain't going to never get nobody. You clearly sitting at home and crying every night and eating popcorn. <laughs> you know and that's watching right. Green Leaf and this is us. They think that's what you're really doing with your life. <laughs> then, so it's like, you know, so I have been legitimized because I'm somebody's wife. So what if he a bum? I'm somebody's wife. Exactly, but that's funny. Uh, even though the show is called Single on a Saturday Night, I've heard many people say, you can do that show alone on a Saturday night. See? <laughs> I said, they say, are you alone? I said, no, the show is single on a Saturday Single does not mean alone. We're not lonely people. I and think on Saturday nights, I'm probably less alone than you. Probably. They probably all alone in their marriage. But anyway, we're going to get to the topic. We have, um, I was about to call you Reverend Carvin Higgins. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, but it was on my mind literally to say Reverend Carvin Higgins. We have Carvin, uh, Carvin Higgins. He, he, he's a very modest individual. However, I have to big him up because he is Grammy Award winning Carvin Higgins. Reverend Carvin Higgins. I mean, his, his, his resume is incredible. Um, I can't even do it any justice, but for, for the most part, Music Soul Child, when those plaques on the wall at Ford Studios or your plaques because you got gold and platinum records and things like that, that's really huge. And for you to join us, that means a lot. It's a blessing to be here. Because we're a mixed bunch of nuts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So he, we're here to talk about men finding the one. And... I don't believe I've ever found the one. I mean, I don't even understand what the one really is because I think just like JT, I'm settled, <laughs> I'm settled every time, even in relationships. So we're gonna uh, go to a break and we're gonna hear from <laughs> Carvin Hagens about how he believes he found the one. And I don't know why I'm not, I'm not skeptical. I'm just, I just wanna know more, you know? Is that okay? Absolutely, that's, that's wonderful. Okay, all right, we're right here at The Grill. We're also uh, broadcasting live on Evolve Radio 24 seven. So everybody out there, you are welcome to join us, but thank you for listening wherever you are in your homes. If you're single, I know you're not lonely. If you're married, you need to listen to us, anything. Maybe you could give us some advice, that kind of thing. So thank you for joining us right here. Thank you to Howard Gilliam Jr. New video productions, the best video productions on this side of heaven. I wouldn't be able to do this without you, Howard Gilliam Jr. I want you to know that. I love you. I do. Thank you. Everybody, you're on the set of Single on a Saturday Night, and we always bring you things that sparkle, things that make you feel good, like pocketbooks and scars and jewelry, and that's all brought to you by AlvinaStyles.com. So what do you have new for this season coming up? Oh my goodness, this season is going to be full of color and fun. Today, our, we're featuring hats today. Hats of every color, every kind, every price range. This is going to be a very colorful summer, and we're extremely excited about it. Absolutely, that's brought to you by AlvinaStyles.com, a longtime supporter of Single on a Saturday Night. It's our five-year anniversary. Aren't you excited? Yes, very excited. It's all good, all bling, all fun. All right, thank you so much for being a part of Single on a Saturday Night. Now let's go bling some more. <laughs> hey, hey. You know what? Welcome to Single on a Saturday Night. We have a packed house, and I am actually incredibly blessed right now. I, I was feeling bad, but something just made me look around. I just looked around. I looked around. Is that Sherry? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. I just looked around when you say your peoples is here, your peoples is here. So this is single on a Saturday night. Just, just let me know. You need to be here. It's going down every fourth Saturday at the grill, 1080 North Delaware Avenue. And we're getting into the topic, which is, um, 
men. Men, every woman wants to know about what men think and how men understood stood they found the one. So, Carvin, yes. you've been in relationships before. Have yes. you ever thought that they could have been a one or settled for it? Or tell me, tell me about that. How do you? Well, well, you every relationship you get in, um, when you get a certain age, you you consider them the one. Like before you're about 30, everyone is really just the one for the time that you need them for. <laughs> After 30, then you start looking at the one for if she may be the one. So everyone you run across, they seem like the one. They may have qualities that you're looking for in the one, but nine times out of the 10, they're just preparing you for the one. Yeah. So you believe you met the one? Absolutely. Are you married? Not yet. Do you want to get married? Absolutely. So when when did you find the one? I just want to know how, how long has um, it been. I mean, because the last conversation right, I had right now we worked three years, three years ago. Yeah, yeah, we met. I met about three years ago. A friend of mine got married, and I was at his wedding. She was there, and we kind of connected, and then we were kind of connected on Facebook, but not really interacting. And so yeah. So what made her the one? Is it? I mean, did she just? Well, um, God made her the one. Uh, uh. That you know, that's that's the first thing, right? So I'm I'm a, a firm believer in the Bible, and in the beginning of the Bible, God talks about Adam, and when God created the animals for Adam to find a helpmate, right? So He created the animals for Adam to find a helpmate, and one of those animals to help him, right? And so through those options. Adam found that he did that was not the one so God put him to sleep and when he woke he saw Eve and it was like that's that's the one that's it so same with me I, I had a lot of different options and in those options I saw things that I like that if they all were piled up into this one person would work perfect for me so after option after option after option I found the one that was made perfect for me. So she can please my thoughts, I can please her thoughts. It sounds corny, but it's you know, it, this, is, this is what it looks like, right? Sometimes we'll be talking and she'll say, I was getting ready to say that. And in the beginning I was like, mm. it's all to get into the house, you know what I mean? And then, but after that, it was like, she would say something that I wouldn't want to say. I was about to say that. I'll just be like, word. You know, leave it that way. So she really completes my thoughts, my ideas. She's a, a perfect helpmate. When we talk about success, we work on that. And then one of the things we agreed on um, from the beginning is that there is no sex until marriage. Wow. Absolutely. You, you said you've been together for three years? Three years. When are you going to get married? I mean, that's three well, years. It, it, does it, it, it will get married exactly when it's supposed to happen, but I'm, I've just learned in my life right now, things you don't have to push or make happen, they will happen. Like, God is a, he is the ultimate planner. So he's, the, he's the author and finisher of our faith, right? So that means that the, in order to be an author, the book has to be written. Right, so if he's the author and finisher of my faith, then that means Carvin Hagen's book is written. So I can't rush through and read every page every day. I gotta take the page day by day. So I don't, everything that comes to me, I, I accept it for how it comes and look in it for what God got for me in that versus complaining through it or looking for the bad part. I'll just look for the good in it and find out, okay, this is what I'm supposed to learn from this situation, so the same thing with her. We got three years and it's just, we're still learning each other. We still, I'm still knowing what she like and don't like. I'm still finding out if she's clean or if she's dirty. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's things, you know, I, I'm a very meticulous guy. She might not be, you know what I'm saying? So though, these are the things that we're figuring out, not to separate, but just to know what I'm getting into for what I'm gonna have to bring to the table and what she's gonna have to bring to the table. So that's where we are. I understand. So I mean, I know that's your your, your ministry, the, the soulmate yeah, ministry. The uh, yeah, I, I mean, I know you. I know you. I know. I know, I know you're ready to come in. I, I mean, I, I believe it or not. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but three years to me, Absolutely. I don't even understand how I could do. I, and I, and I love God too. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying three years. I, you learn more when you're not having sex. I can tell you that much. I can imagine. The conversations are way beyond that. It, because sex would probably be the beginning and the end of the conversation. Now we talk about everything, so. 
That's amazing. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Because um, you, you, you're about to come up with some, uh, you said you found your ordained, uh, ordained uh, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first I want to give props. Props because I didn't know what your story was, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But but to me, that's providence. This this show, even this episode, however this goes down, already is providence because here you have two men two. coming to talking about they found the one and the stories are similar. That's not that's not by accident. You know what I mean? So so in terms of every everything that I was about to say, he just said it. So I mean he covered it. So and, how and you know this wasn't your ordained spouse because y'all because it, it don't go down like that. We believe the same God. That's what that is. Yeah, There's this, this yeah. one word that we both believe. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this could have went either way. Yeah, All words go down that way amongst amongst alpha males and stuff. <laughs> right. You know, but but real talk though, I mean, and that's beautiful to hear because you don't you don't hear men talking about love and relationships. Period. Let alone those higher level waiting and stuff. You don't hear about those kind of things. And these kind of stories, this show, this day, it may have felt the way it felt in terms of how it was going. But I'm telling you, today that that just gives me confirmation that today is meant that this is a certain season and really everyone needs to pay attention. Because what he's just said in, in, in his turn to talk, I've been saying for four years on this show and I've been putting it out there. But now is the time, now is the season. I put, put out to the, everyone who's watching and who will watch. Pay attention to what you're hearing. When you hear men speak about waiting, waiting for God, looking for the right one, wanting to be married, these are mature men who are you know, serving as examples that they exist, that we exist, and that relationship is real, and black love is real. Love in general is real and important. So, you know, that's the theme of today, and that's, you know, what I want to put out and uh, contribute for uh, this uh, episode. I feel you. It's real. I'm not, I'm not doubting the realness of it. However, what about the ones that came before? What about the ones who was just so in love that you love? I mean, like, right. those moments, I love Well, see, you. now that it ain't work out, they can tell you they was just, that was the, that the work one. on the... No, no, no. no now no. they can just tell you, no, the no. issue was, it wasn't love, it was lust. Yeah. Because the relationship started in sex and ended in sex. It was, it was a great relationship. We had good times together. But when I sit down and look at the person she was and the person I was, we weren't even prepared for each other anyway. So it, it wasn't that she was back because each that I have dated has gone on and gotten married. So, you know, to God be the glory for them. And, and I, I hope that the marriage go exactly like God wanted to go. But we had to, we started off on the wrong foot. We started off figuring out how we gonna get her in the bed. And she started off thinking, well, what day I'm gonna let him get it? Versus, yo, he needs to know what I'm thinking. He knows, needs to know my future. He needs to know my plans. He needs to know what I'm doing at work, how I work, how hard I work, what I give to work. He needs to know these things. If he doesn't know it, then, then really it's gonna be gone once the thrill is gone. But it's not like y'all having sex all the time. I'm sorry. It's not like y'all having sex. So, I mean, during the Sometimes. course of the day, you got your phone calls or your times that you spend. We don't have to know. listen to you, JT, because you didn't fail this thing twice. <laughs> right. However, and that's I mostly I'm like agree it. with you, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Because, you know, I don't believe none of this. That's great for them. But, you know, you know I'm skeptical. I'm, you know, you know right. all of my eyelashes, both sets, are raised right now. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I'm going to listen. Than the JT because you know what I have never been married. Maybe he has something on the other side that he could teach us. Cause you're saying that it didn't start in sex. Is that what you're trying to say? I didn't say that. I never said that. Oh, so what are you saying? I'm just saying that at the time period they seem like the person or that one, and you think, oh, I found the one, so you go off and run and get married, and you find out it's not the one because you were. But JT, programmed. so like, uh -huh. but you ran off and got married. So Shelly. She ain't never skipped to my loo and said I do. And y'all know I ain't never said I do because I man, don't. Man, man, man. So, Shelly is looking dumb. No, but I'm Shelly, saying, so what mean? made you think? You said just because you were in it and things, things seemed right, that you were like, all right, so I'm going to get married because it seemed like. That's what I'm saying. I mean, things been really good to me. Okay. But, but we're going to we, we we go to a break <laughs> and we're going to come back because I think we all got a lot of seem like they the ones. Yeah. Right. I mean, to me, this seems, I, I believe you and I trust Carvin and, 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 and David, but to me, sometimes I feel like I, I don't understand. I don't understand the one. <laughs> I, I thought they were the one. I've been engaged. I've been engaged two, two and a half times. So let's go to a 
a brace. Are you just changed a half a time? Two and a half. I'll tell you about the half. This is single on a Saturday night right here at the Grill, 1080 North Delaware Avenue. We're on Evolve Radio 24-7 right now. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Howard Gilliam Jr. Thank you to Doc Smitty. We love you, Doc Smitty. We really do. We really do. Thank you for joining us. Groove Boy Entertainment. Go to, go to Groove Boy Entertainment on Facebook, and you can see all the lovely pictures from Single on a Saturday Night. Shout out to Doc Smitty. I said, that's fiction. I dropped my hat and ran. The whole veil comes off. A little bit X-rated. Happy birthday, Tracy! Did the gas and took off. Oh. Right here at the Grill, 1080 North Delaware Avenue. We were talking about the one, and Donovan West is here. He's going to break it down in a minute. But before that, we have to get to, to one of the people that helps us put the show together, one of our sponsors for today. We have attorney, Dion Browning. Hello, Dion Browning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So you have a foundation, browningfoundation.org. And tell us about what you have coming up right now. We do, and hopefully everybody can attend and hopefully find the one at the Browning Foundation. Well, maybe gala. bring the one with their beautiful we'll bring gown. Bring the one, exactly. <laughs> um, it is a scholarship gala. We are awarding scholarships, but also raising money for the foundation. It is September 30th. Um, the event will be held at the Double Tree by the airport. The address is 4509 Island Avenue in Philadelphia. And before I go any further, I definitely want to thank Cherry Johnson Roy and Sedina Davis for uh, bringing me here today. They've done a great job publicizing this event and the foundation. So we definitely wanted to say thank you to those guys. Oh, thank you to those guys too. I love those guys there. Good job. So anyway, so the gala, tell us about the gala. Let's, let's big up the gala, make it big. It's a gala. So that means everyone's gonna get dressed up and they're gonna come out. So when they get dressed up, what are they gonna see? What's it gonna be like? Tell me about it. It is a black tie event, red carpet. I mean, we are really going all out. Mm. Um, so um, we are having a black tie event. So, you know, gentlemen in their tuxes, women in their fine gowns, um, we're really going to uh, put on a Black Excellence event. We are, you know, going to be doing some 444 allergy, Black Excellence, the entertainment. We do have a DJ, and I just talked to somebody. We, we have some video photography situation going on, but, uh, but yes, there will be a DJ. And um, we've invited some of the tastemakers of Philadelphia to come out and uh, celebrate with us. So. You got some of the great tastemakers all around you. You just absolutely, don't know. Absolutely. You have no idea who's around you. But anyway, let's talk about the scholarships. More importantly, the scholarships are big. So if you're into supporting causes and things like that, we want the children to go to, uh, go to school. But more importantly, someone over 30, I believe you mentioned. Tell me about the scholarships. Absolutely. There are three scholarships that we're awarding this year. Uh, the first is earmarked for college freshmen. Uh, the second one is for upperclassmen, but as we discussed, the one that's near and dear to my heart is um, a, the third scholarship is for graduate or undergraduate students over the age of 30. Um, so wow, there's still time amazing. to apply for the scholarships. You can do so at the browningfoundation.org. That is T-H-E, browningfoundation.org. And there, the applications are there as well as the FAQs. So I need you to take heed to that, the browning foundation.org if you need a scholarship. The biggest thing, if you're over 30, and a lot of times don't think those jobs are all secure, one day you could be at your job, the next day you could be gone, and you may want to further your education to get to another point in your life, and that scholarship that's available for you, you need to check it out, because I know some people need that scholarship. So, Shelly, if I may, it's yes, the you reason may. why I should probably explain the reason why it's of extreme importance to me. I received both my Juris Doctorate and LLM after the age of 30. So really? I do myself understand wow. how difficult that is at, you know, what they would call an advanced stage in education, um, trying to achieve those, those goals. So uh, that's, why, that's why it's pretty important to me. That's a great message. Not even that. It's never too late. It's never too late to pursue your, your dreams, pursue aspirations, pursue, I mean, He's an attorney, so after 30, you're saying
saying you became an attorney. After 30, absolutely. That's awesome. So give it up. TheBrowningFoundation.org. Go to the website. Get your tickets for the gala. Get all dressed up. We like to get dressed up around here. We get dressed up on every given day, right? That's just, I'm bling bling, she's bling bling. That's how we do. Well, we're gonna, thank you so much. We're gonna get yeah. back into the topic because we're talking about the one. And I think it seems far-fetched for some of us about the one, but <laughs> to do, for me, it's like, uh, is it really possible? But go ahead, Donovan West. Well, Shelly, you talked about, you know, I don't know the one, the one was in front of me, I didn't recognize the one, but I think what Carvin is talking about and Dr. David, they're talking about, you know, really praying for a level of discernment, right? And we all should do that. I mean, at the end of the day, we should all think about what does that actually mean, right? So we have three different levels. You have professional, you have what I would call personal, and that, and that personal, that's really your passion. And then you have purpose. Okay, so in a professional sense, it's about these external drives, you know, they tell you to like a certain type. They tell you that this is what you should look for in a mate. And those are all those external drives, they typically become your, your kit. They become your skit. They become, you know, this is what you know to look for and how you interact. They become your, um, your script when you interact with one another, right? So you put on this whole campaign and it's this whole, you know, um, presentation when you meet someone. And this is all based off of those external pressures. And then at some point you mature, you say, okay, well, you know what? I want someone who actually pulls out some of my passion, so to speak. But that's lust with a veil, right? But again, it seems a little bit more like you, so you go with it. And you have this whole another scene or episode or for some, you know, different volumes, right? Of experiences that are under that umbrella. And then we start talking about a purpose-driven relationship, right? That one that is really ordained, that one that is really, uh, that really serves who you are spiritually. And, and it may not necessarily be that person that can finish your sentence, by the way. You, that person may have contrasting mindsets that really complement one another, right? That yin and yang approach where, again, is, is what I didn't know I was missing until I got beyond those other sets, right? That becomes the difference. So when we start talking about who the one is, we really want to talk about getting to a place and space in our mind and our spirit where we can discern between what we want and what's really actually for us. Yeah. That's it. I need to get to that place. I think I've been seeing somebody. I think I made a mistake. Oops, gotta go. Bye bye. <laughs> well, that's the level of discernment they keep praying for. There you go. That's when you wake up. You discern something. Maybe I just woke up because this seems like you're not the one right you now. Discerning stuff. See? Right, but you know, you're more we're, we're also, than you are. but we're also very transactional in the sense that you know what, this isn't the one, so you just move on. And that's not the truth. I mean, we look at it as like we win or we lose, but the re the reality is we win or we learn. So what can you learn from that relationship, right? right? right. And then how do you? segue out of don't that because don't date bums that's what i learned <laughs> don't date bums but from a bum you can learn a lot right there's a lot of information there's a lot of things you can learn about yourself and then also in that same transition right when we kick them to the curve we forgot to do something else we forgot to heal right we forgot to heal we also forgot to forgive ourselves so we walk around with all of these minds so to speak spiritually and mentally as we interact with the next person and even though that person may, there may not be any sex involved, but there's a number of other situations involved, isn't it? And then when those situations come, right, and we trip a mind, guess what? We go zero to a thousand real quick, don't we? And so it's about levels of healing and also levels of discernment because in every crisis and every situation, you have to look at you first. You got to say, hold up, even the lens that I'm looking through, is that the right one? That's, that's right, I forgot to change it because I still had it from the last relationship. Let me take that off. Mm. Wow, that is interesting. We're gonna go. Back. We're gonna go to a break. It's gonna be the end, and we're gonna go to the next show. We're gonna continue this. That's what we're gonna do. See, I got lost. In it. Like, yo, he just broke it down in a way. I was sitting there like, huh? Wow, I really am in the wrong relationship. So I'm saying, you heard it here first. Anyway, this is two good Saturday night. Oh, we on the radio too. Evolve Radio 24 7 I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. And you never hurt anybody. I was joking. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Join us next week. We're going to continue because we're going to have Dr. Dave Pulley on the spotlight talking about his one. Because guess what? She's here. So you have to come back. You have to join us next week right here at the Grill, 1080 North Delaware Avenue, every fourth Saturday. Don't forget, Howard Gilliam Jr. has a TV show, My Special Day TV, every Thursday at 1 o'clock. So for all these special weddings, you know who you need to go to, Howard Gillian Jr. He's a celebrity wedding person. He's done so.
celebrity weddings. Because I was right there with them. Ah. Anyway, this is it. Let's go. Come back next week. This is about to go down. Yeah.